Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Aren't these flowers just so sweet and so pretty? I am in the process of replenishing my stash of paper flowers that I use in my projects. And I thought I would show you guys how I make these. And then um, just a couple of ideas on how you can use these. Now I ordinarily use them to decorate scrapbooks, boxes, bags, and other items. But I'm also gonna show you two really creative ways that these really adorable flowers can be used. You can make them larger, you can make them smaller. I'm making mine using die cuts that I cut out from my Cricut. And I used this paper pad, and it's a hot buy, and it is the Parisian Lane from Recollections. And I absolutely love this pad. So I picked out a couple of really fun papers and that's what I use to make the flowers as well as the leaves. So let me show you how I make these. So what I do is I cut out graduated sizes of the same pattern on my Cricut. Now you can use any die cutting system that you have. You can punch out flowers using just hand punches. But as long as you have a series of flowers, um, you can make this project. The flowers don't need to graduate from this size to this size. You can make them all one size. You can make them a large and then a medium. It all depends on how you want your flowers to look. So let me show you how I do these. Oh, and then I forgot to mention that I also have some coordinating leaves that I cut out from the pink polka dot paper in there. So for each one of the flowers that I'll make, I am going to use two of each size. So I have two petals, I mean two flowers, two large, two medium, two smalls, and then two extra smalls. And then I have two leaves as well. So I'll move the others over here to the side and I'll lay out for you what I'm using. So there are my two leaves, there are my two minis, my two smalls, my mediums, and my extra larges. So that's what I'll be using to make this flower. So let me move this out of the way. And then I'm using an old hand towel because I need to lay something down so that when I do what I'm about to do, I don't make a mess all over the place. So you guys have probably seen this technique. It's the way that I like to make um, paper flowers. I would say 90% of the time I use this technique. And what I'm about to do is just wet these and then I'm going to ball them up. But what I do is I actually use some Bath and Body Works spray on this. And this is a fragrance that I bought that I wasn't too crazy about when I bought it, but I thought it would go great on my flowers. So I do this with other scents as well. So I'll take my flowers, spray them, and then when I package them up, if I'm not putting them on a gift, when I package them up, whoever's getting that package, when they open it, it still holds the fragrance and it smells wonderfully. So you can actually put these in the drawer for drawer scents as well. So there are several uses that you can use these flowers for. So all I'm doing is getting these wet. And ordinarily I would do the spray part outside because I wouldn't want my whole studio smelling like a whole bunch of different flowers or fragrances all day. But because it's raining, I am doing this indoors. So then all I'm doing is gathering up all of the flowers so I can just kind of get them all nice and wet. And then I'm just going to take them and ball them up. Okay, so now they're all balled. And what I want to do is give them a moment just to dry, not completely, but just enough so that when I take them, when I unravel them, they don't start tearing. So I think these are at a good point for me to unravel. So when you're taking them apart, just make sure that you're being 
delicate with them and you don't want to unravel them to the point of having them just be flat. You want to make sure that there's still, still some crinklies and like this one, I'm just going to leave it because you don't want it to be perfect. You want it to look like it's a flower that's sort of wilting. Okay, so all of my unraveling is done. And now what I want to do, I'm just going to scoop these up, move them out of the way and grab, sorry about shaking that camera, grab my butcher block and then I'm going to put some heat to these so that um, they can dry and get nice and hardened. And I'm gonna use my heat gun. going to dry these. Okay, so everything is all dry and now we can put the flour together. So when I'm putting mine together, you have two options. You can put it together so that there is no distinction between the petals. And what by that, what I mean is on this one, I have all the petals going in the same direction, so you can see the V in between the petals. On this one, I have spaced them out so that they just kind of make a circle of petals. And so it's all personal preference on how it is that you want to do it. On this one, I am going to go with having them all go in the same direction, all of my petals, so that I'll have V's between each one, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to use a mini brad and I'll start with the smallest one first. Put the brad through the hole, get my next smallest one and basically all I'm doing is lining up petal to petal so that I've got the V in between and then I'll take the next one and I'm lining it up just so that all of the petals are going in the same direction. And I'll do this this way sometimes and then I'll do it the circular way other times. So now I'm lining up my next to the larger one. And now I can put my two large ones on with all of my petals going in the same direction. So there, you can kind of see how you've got that V separation. And now I can come back and open up my brad. And lay it down and just look at it to see if I want to do any tweaking to it. And no, I don't. I really like this one. So now what I'm going to do is I have my leaves and I want to take some of this lace. And all it is is lace that's on a roll and I cut off pieces and I want to use my glue gun and I'm just going to take this lace, place it on there and just put a small amount of glue right there on the inside and just hold it until it dries. And then I'll do the same thing with my other one. And usually what I do when I'm making these flowers is I make a whole bunch at once. I'll spend a couple of hours and just make up a whole bunch of flowers and put them in a plastic tub so that when I need them, I just get the tub out and pull out the flowers that I want. And I'm doing this today because I'm pretty much getting pretty low on my flowers. So then all I do is I take my petals and I position them where I like them, just like that. And then I'll just come back and place some glue so that I can get my petals stuck. And then I'll come back with one of my beads 
and just place a bead. And I think I'm going to go with a gray one on this one. So I'll just drop a little dot of glue right in there. And then I'll take this bead, place it inside. And how pretty is that? And you can dress these up as much as you want. And as a matter of fact, when I use them on projects, I tend to add um, some greenery, some more lace hanging down. But since I don't know exactly what I'll be doing with these, I'm leaving them in this state and then I'll make them into something more as I go along. But I did want to show you guys just a couple of ideas on how you can use these flowers in other projects or for other reasons. One of the things that you can do is I make buttons. So I have these button pin backs and you can actually take this and glue it to um, a pin back and you can create your own little flower boutonniere for your dress or you can pin it to a bag and just remove it if you want to. It is really versatile in this way. So that's just one of the ways that you can use this. And then another way, which is one of my favorites, which is a way that I have used it before in the past, and I'm going to go ahead and do one for you guys, is just making a mini wrist corsage. So what I do is I take just a couple of strips of ribbon and I am going to put just a small dot of glue right there so I can get the two ribbons stuck to one another. And then I'll take the actual flower and glue it to the ribbon. You want to make sure you get that nice and stuck on there. And then you'll have this. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to just place it on my wrist to give you an idea of how that would look as a wrist corsage with the um, ribbon hanging down. So you, I can't tie it because I can't tie it with one hand, but you can get a pretty good idea of just how pretty this is. So for the baby shower, the mother of the bride, uh, this is just a perfect idea for having a customized wrist corsage. So those are a couple of ways that you can actually use these particular flowers. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you've gotten some good ideas on how to make your own paper flowers and how to use those. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online family. So you guys have a great day and we will craft later. Bye.